kind of um, you had some different assignments last night. You kind of follow Reddick, you, you brought your partner in other times. How, just how is that for you? That, that kind of difference that you have to be Um It shows my versatility. <laughs> Makes me feel good, and I can say that. Nah, um, whatever it takes to win, and whatever it takes to help my team win. Um, you know, JJ, um, it's unbelievable. He got hot and got going, and then you got a guy like Jimmy, where you want to keep him inside. You know, keep him outside the three, and JJ inside the three, and Tobias is. Those guys are good. For me, it's just um, being able to help my team win in every different aspect on that on that end, not offensively, but defensively. And I think that's where games are won defensively. Kyle, uh, you knew Mark Beckman from Memphis, and mm -hmm. now he's been a teammate again. What is he like as a defender? What have you maybe appreciated that you didn't appreciate first time around? Or I think close? when we were together, we were so young that you no, know, we were trying to figure it out. And, um, you know, he didn't know if he was going to be a defensive guy, offensive guy. We all, you know, it's kind of one of the things we just don't know who you are yet. And um, <clears throat> I think the appreciation that I've learned from him is just his professionalism, his approach, his um, every day. He doesn't care about anything but winning, and he does whatever. I mean, Mark's had hasn't had a big scoring game, but maybe once since he's been here, and he's been effective on our team. You know, it's contagious. So on his, you know, the unselfishness, his defense, his you know, rotations, his smarts, you know, just everything has been effective, you know, effective on our team. And um, that's the appreciation you get from a guy like him. And you just seen, you just see what he brings to the table every day. I mean, you've attacked him as an, you know, like, as an opponent. Yeah. How difficult is, is this, how difficult challenges he as a defender? Uh, when Mark's like, you know, Mark's, up in the screening role, engaged. He's he's got some of the best hands. You know, I've played with you know Chuck Hayes, and Marcus Soul has had you know some of the best hands I've ever seen, um, defensively as bigs. And you know, Marks, you know when he's up, he's going to get his hand on his ball. He's smart. He's going to know his positions. He's going to know the rotations. He's going to get to the right spots. Um, and he's a big, strong body. I mean, Mark is seven feet, big man, and um, he's able to do his job at a high level. <clears throat> Uh, how do you feel about your game one performance in this series compared to your game one performance in the last series? Uh, we won the game. That's the difference. And we won the game, and um, I scored a few more points. <laughs> <laughs> in, in terms of how this team is fitting together, Kyle, and just in terms of reading each other and knowing what you want to do and what you want to run at different times, how have you seen the progress kind of as it's going along? I think I think the ability for us to be able to lock in on one team has helped us. Um, you know, with the Magic, you know, we we were able to lock in, and then with the Philadelphia 76ers, now we're able to lock in on just them. It helps us tremendously because we can figure out where we want to be, how we want to play it, what the rotations are going to be. You know, what you what we would like to do, um, what we would like to stay away from. Um, I think that's helped our team, and, and it's just given us more time to figure out, okay, you know this is tendencies, right? You know, you got, listen, these guys got all-stars. These guys are really, really, really good. And you got, you know, there are some tendencies that they have, and that's where you try to figure out what we as a group, you know, what our group is like, all right, what, what are their tendencies? How do we, you know, take away their tendencies? Or how do we um, be proactive to their tendencies, not reactive? That's still a hard thing to just be able to adjust in the game. What about this team kind of allows you to? Our team? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we're really smart. I think our, our starting five, I mean, our, our group overall, high, our, our group overall IQ is really high. I think um, I think our starting five might be honestly up there with any of the starting five high, uh, IQ wise, honestly. Um, just gives us an advantage to, you know, be able to figure it out and be able to communicate it. And that's, I think, that's one thing I, I, I didn't say. We were able to communicate what we want to do verbally and physically a lot easier. At the same level? Of yes. Yeah. 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 How much did Mark change that communication level? A lot. You know, I think just his, um, just his talking. And, you know, he's a defensive player of the year at one point. I mean, you got two defensive players of the year, guys on your team. Just they know them knowing opponents, studying opponents, studying the habits. No, knowing rotations, being there, it, it makes it a lot easier um, to help and talk and to not have to, you know, do this, that, make sure we just 
we have a coverage, we can switch it, we could do this, we could do that on the fly really easy. Now, I know winning is your number one thing, but playing Philly, we know your affinity for Philly. Is it any bigger of a deal? I mean, have you heard from a lot of people from Philly? <laughs> nah, man. I have, I just, I'm keeping this as strictly business as possible. Um, you know, it's definitely Philadelphia, but they're not, it's, it's, a, it's the opponent right now. It's the, it's the enemy, and that's all that really matters. Um, it's about my team right now, Toronto, and that's all that really matters is us getting better every game, every possession that we possibly can. What, what do you, game one, do you think you can improve on as a team? Um, a lot. You know, we had a lot of breakdowns. Honestly, we had a lot of breakdowns. We watched the film. Um, there's things that we can adjust and we will adjust to and, and try to be a little bit better on. Um, and I'm not going to tell you because, you know, there's things that we need to keep in house, but uh, we definitely could do a better job in, in a lot of areas. And that's where, you know, we're confident that we can make adjustments. And we know Philadelphia's going to come out and make adjustments, but we have to try to, you know, make the adjustment before they make, make their adjustments and, and go and play. Will you tell us what you think Philly will adjust? What I think Philly will adjust on? No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, we have we have some thoughts on what they yeah. will, will adjust. We think they'll do, but I'm not gonna tell you, Doug. Yeah, you're, you're awesome outfit. You know, 1946 NBA shirt. I like you and all, but your, chuck, your chucks are your chucks are you know your chucks look good on you, but you know I I, I can't give you guys secrets, Doug. I got it. I got it. No, no. I mean they shouldn't. I just being honest, I, I don't think they should anymore. I don't think they underestimated him for a while now. I think he's just that good that you know you can try to take away this and take away that, but he figures it out. And the one thing he still does the best in the league is run the floor. You can't you can't stop that. You can't stop the way he runs the floor. I mean, what are you going to do, grab him half court and it's a foul? I mean, he's that starts him in, alone, his transition running. He gets out and goes, and then we figure it out after that. So by the time he's catching the ball, sometimes he's catching the ball on the box with 22 seconds left. It's kind of hard to stop a guy like that with 22 seconds, 20, 19 seconds on the shot clock because his pace is, his pace is so good. Fred was talking about him even trying new stuff and new spots on the floor during the play. I mean, his evolution is He's only been playing basketball seven years, something like that. So, so it's, it's, that ceiling's unbelievably high, and the information he can intake is still a lot more in his brain that he can he can put in there. You know, it's a lot of things that he can watch film and get better on. That's I said. This time of the year, it's like everything's slower. Everything's a little bit focused on one team, one situation. You're not flying all over the place. You're going home. You're going other. And I think that's one thing where this time of year is he can get better because he has that time to be able to focus on, you know, this or that or see what's going on. What about his skill set allows him to, <coughs> to, like, not just try new shots in games, but just kind of expand his game as quickly as he has? I don't think he's trying new shots. I think he's just adding in what he's worked on this summer, right? And I think he's working on certain things that teams are trying to take away from him in the playoffs. You know, just in the playoffs, game one, whatever. Orlando was trying to do this, and game two, he switched it up and did this. You know, So it's not what he's trying. It's things he's worked on all summer that he's able to incorporate now because these are things that they're taking away or these are things that they're giving him. When you see Kawhi go off, you, know, do, you guys almost try not to just watch him because he's just dazzling everybody. You know what I mean? You got to play the game, but you, you get almost mesmerized. You try to just make sure you help them as much as you possibly can. And if that's screening the right way, if that's rolling, if that's calling the play for him, if that's um, helping him on defense and helping him save some energy, you try to help him and help the team no matter what in, in any type of situation, source of whatever you can do. If you got to get out and take his man for a second or screen his man or, you know, back cut just to get him open, those are situations where you try not to get, you know, you, that's, that's where you help them at. You don't help them by just standing and watching. You help them in other aspects. Have you ever seen anyone make the game look as easy as he did in that game and also the Orlando, I guess, game two? Um, I was saying this. I, was, I had one other game that I've seen like that, and that was um, Yao Ming. Uh, we played Portland game one. He was like 12 for 12, and he missed a shot. It was crazy. 
it was it was unbelievable. It, it was just an easy game. And I don't think yesterday it wasn't easy for Kawhi. Like it, it's not easy. He just he got to his spots. He made some threes. Got to the free throw line. Um, his pace is unbelievable. Um, it's not easy. And you know Philadelphia tried their best. They did. Kawhi just made shots and he was aggressive. And um, we did what we were supposed to do. But that's what I said. It's only one game. Um, we got to go out there and, and execute in, in game two. Well, sorry, you right up. Uh, Nick Nurse ready. Thank you, guys. <laughs>